Hello students. Today we will read electric fields due to a system of charges. In the previous cl class we have uh, read electric field. What is it and how it is uh, denoted? What kind of uh, quantity it is? And what is the formula to find out electric field at a given point? So just we will go for a recap. Electric field is denoted by a symbol capital E and it is a vector quantity so this capital E is always denoted with a arrow at its head. Then it is given as force divided by a given charge or we can write 1 by 4 epsilon naught into Q divided by R square. This electric field also have relation with R as inverse uh, square. Okay, E is proportional to distance in the same format as force is proportional. As the distance will increase this electric field, uh, the strength of electric field, the magnitude of electric field will decrease. If E is increasing by 1 unit, then R will decrease by 1 square unit or vice versa. Okay. So, this is the relationship of electric field and the formula we are using to find out electric field for a given charge. Now we are having a system of charges. We do not have a single charge in our system, but we have many charges and number of charges in our system. So how do we will find the uh, electric field due to all these charges, the resultant electric field and at which point we will get the resultant electric field. So first before going to the points, we will go to this diagram come to the down. See, we are having charges Q1, Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. Okay. One more thing which we have seen is that from a positive Q charge, these electric fields move radially outward and from a negative Q charge these electric fields move radially inward towards the negative charge. Okay. So this should also be remembered. Now due to this Q1 electric field is in the same direction going upward. See this is E1 due to electric field due to charge Q1. Due to Q1. Now see this is Q2. This is Q2. Come straight here. This, 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 this way. See this is. This is E2. Electric field due to charge Q2 due to Q2. Now this is charge Q3 and it is extending its effect and we are getting its electric field in this direction here. This is due to Q3. Similarly see here this is Q4 and extending in the same direction over here we are getting this E4 electric field due to charge Q4. Electric field due to charge Q4. Okay. So, and this one, the point where all these electric fields are meeting, we will take it as origin. Okay. It's the originating point, or we can make it as O. And from O to this particular charge, we are having the unit vector. See here, from this particular point, from uh, origin O, 
to q2 we are having this unit vector r 2p similarly from origin to q1 we are having vector r 1p this is position vector and then similarly from q3 it is r 3p and q4 it is r 4p okay now we'll come to the point number 1 consider a system of charges q1 q2 till qn with position vector r1 r2 and still going to r1 rn okay for q1 we have r1 vector and for q2 we have r2 vector q3 r3 we will go up to qn for that we will have rn okay getting these are corresponding position vectors relative to origin o relative to origin o now electric field at a point in space due to the system of charges is defined to be the force experienced by unit charge placed at that point without disturbing the origin original position of charges or the system of charges q1 q2 q3 so this particular thing the second point we will be understanding in the upcoming slides how uh, this electric field is exactly working okay why this uh, electric field is not valid only for a single charge or why in, for a single charge we cannot find the electric field okay we whenever we are calculating electric field we tend to have a test charge for electric field we will define a test charge we will define a test charge in a system okay that is something like mandatory and we will do it now coulomb's law and law of superposition is used to determine this field at point p denoted by position vector r okay so what we are going to do is at position p we will find out the electric field with the help of coulomb's law and law of superposition now let me remind you coulomb's law okay once you will get what is coulomb's law and what is superposition law it will be easy for us to proceed to the next a uh, step okay coulomb's law gives the force uh, for the given two charges uh, if the charges given two charges are q1 and q2 the force will be given as k into q1 q2 divided by r square where k is a constant where k is a constant having a value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and numeral value of 10 to, uh, 9 into 10 to the power 9 okay now what is superposition principle superposition principle when we are looking into a system of charges like q1 q2 q3 q4 and so on till qn we will define force on that system using the superposition principle so i'm just rubbing this diagram uh, make a note of this diagram for your like uh, remembrance i'll rub it now the superposition principle is given as superposition principle for the system of charges as force equals to k q1 sigma i equals to q2 to n q n by r square c this is q1 with reference to this this is q2 q3 and q4 uh, so on to qn so we need minimum two charges to find a force between them so we have taken as q1 our reference charge and with reference to q1 we are finding charge which, which is shared by q1 q2 charge which is shared by q1 and q3 charge which is shared by q1 and q4 and then up to qn so 
we have added the all the charges after q2 like q1 is our compulsory one it will come in each and every formula and then qn this n will change q, like qi it should be qi because i is a variable here i equals to variable the value of i will be uh, 2 3 4 and up to what up to n okay value of i will be this so accordingly we can change the value of i here it will be q2 q3 q4 q5 for a given situation and hence we will find the force on a system force on a system using what using both the coulomb's law as well as superposition uh, principle it is not a result out of one principle it is both the things coming under the consideration so let's move on to the next side so we will see electric field e1 at r due to q1 is given by at a distance of r which is denoted like wait a minute this is our charge q1 placed over here and this is our test charge okay q we will take q t as test charge q t equals to test charge test charge will also have some electric fields but the magnitude of test charge is extremely small therefore its electric field will not play any important role here but our charge q1 is a big charge it will have bigger electric fields so this will be influencing our test charge influencing our test charge okay this should be understood very clearly both the charges will have their own respective electric fields but as charge q1 is extremely bigger than charge qt the electric field due to qt are very small of negligible magnitude they will not play any important role here so we can ignore it now the distance between our test charge and q1 is denoted by a position vector r1 okay this is actually the position vector r and one states this is the position vector with respect to our charge q1 and from the formula of electric field the general electric field formula is k into q by r square where k equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon node so e1 equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon node that is k into q1 because electric field due to q1 needs to be calculated here we will take the charge whose electric field needs to be calculated not the charge on which we need to calculate the uh, electric field see ye wala charge wo charge hai jo is system mein electric fields de raha hai ye wala wo charge hai jo is system mein is particular electric field se influence ho raha hai so in the given formula hame wo charge lena hai jo influence kar raha hai na ki wo charge lena hai jo influence ho raha hai so who is influencing here q1 is influencing so in the formula we will put the value of q1 that should be made clear otherwise you will find difficulty while calculating the numeral value of electric field in a given system okay q1 divided by r1p square into the unit vector unit vector gives what unit vector provides direction not magnitude unit vector is also known as directional vector unit vectors are also known as directional vector directional vector why so because their magnitude is zero uh, magnitude is unit not zero magnitude is one unity where r1p is unit vector in the direction 
from q1 to p and r1 p is the distance between q1 and p when we are using vector we are talking about a straight distance between them what is that known as displacement displacement is a vector quantity whereas distance is not a vector quantity distance is used to denote path length also path length which can be anything like this is our circle we are standing here and we came to this point by walking this way but what is the distance we uh, covered this is the distance so this is displacement we actually covered and this will be denoted by vector whereas this is the distance we calculated which is a scalar quantity it do not have any direction no direction okay now the in the same manner come to this point follow up the yellow ink in the same manner e2 is given as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught that is the value of k into q2 because here the influencing charge is q2 influencing charge equals to q2 okay q2 by r2 p the whole square into r2 p cap so this is the distance uh, displacement or the position vector which is showing the position of q2 and the test charge at the point p and this is the unit vector similarly we obtain expression for all the fields all all the fields implies e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 e6 so on till en we will find the value of all these fields <clears throat> so by superposition principle what we will get is uh, the resultant electric field or the electric field due to system electric field due to system will be given as e1 into r plus e2 into uh, for the uh, uh, vector r2 up to en for the vector rn okay and from the formula see here this particular formula star 1 star 2 we will substitute the value here similarly for nth also we will substitute en will be given as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into qn upon r n p square that is the vector quantity into i write above r cap n p okay so this is star nth equation nth equation which we have substituted over here and then what is the common here find out the common common is just 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught nothing else okay in the coulomb's law what we have seen q1 was also common but here only one charge is there and which is not common which is ranging from 1 to n okay so see over here we have taken 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into sigma where i is variable which goes from 1 to n q i by r i p square into r i p cap okay so i'll write the formula once again in this ma uh, matter let's see it the formula we are getting is here 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught which is common the value of k into sigma i equals to 1 to n the i variable i i is variable which goes from 1 to n value of the charge into charge which is variable and hence we have written qi and ri i implies whatever charge we will take with respect to that uh, the value of i will change i to p okay some value some charge to distance p p is again a constant like uh, we have to find with respect to p only the whole square into rip unit vector okay so this is what we will get a equation when we are dealing with a system of charges and we tend to find electric field due to them e is a vector quantity 
that varies from one point to other in space and is determined from the position of source charge like how far the source charge is from the test charge how near it is what is the magnitude of source charge or how much charge the source is having all these things define e okay e is dependent upon the source charge it is dependent upon source charge dependent upon source charge okay so moving on to the next slide so uh, the thing which we now need to see is physical significance of the electric field the uh, word we have taken electric field why we have taken electric field what are the physical significance physical significance okay first thing is that we are having coulomb's law coulomb's law second we are having superposition principle superposition principle due to this we can find out force on two charges due to each other due to each other and due to this we can find force in a given system force in a system of charges so after this point if we are not having electric field ka concept still we will be doing well in our electrostatics so why we have introduced the concept of electric field and effects of electric field in a given charge system we need to understand when we uh, go with the electric field electric field e bar okay this actually gives a very good characterization for our charges it's a characteristic property of our charges first thing which needs to be noted characteristic feature of charges okay secondly when we deal with electrostatics electrostatics where our charges are static electrostatic charges are static it do not play a very important role or its role is little insignificant or little less okay role is less but when we go with electrodynamics or this beyond electrostatics time dependent electromagnetic field okay just one minute if we are de dealing with time dependent electromagnetic phenomena electro magnetic phenomena it plays a very significant role okay plays a very important role okay so first thing is that electric field is a vector quantity electric field is a vector quantity vector quantity so what uh, we want to say when we are saying that it is a vector quantity what message we want to give to you is that it have both direction and it have 
magnitude so when we deal with electric field we tend to define direction as well as magnitude in a given uh, charge system okay now we are just checking a charge q1 we do not have any other charge in our surrounding this is our surrounding and in this surrounding we are having charge q1 and this q1 is having electric fields like this this is having so many electric fields radially distributed electric fields radially distributed electric fields why did i say radially distributed because uh, in this uh, microscopic uh, environment we aim at uh, studying this charges in spherical way like our charge q1 is very uh, like comparing to macroscopic world is very small but which shape it tends to have is uh, kind of spherical it gives electric a uh, field in all the direction in the front in the back in the side at a angle of 30 degree at a angle of 60 degree down up everywhere it will produce electric field in all the directions all the available direction let us say we have eight direction or we have 10 direction let it be n number of direction it will give electric field in all the direction so this is known as radial distribution of electric field and this charges uh, giving us radial electric fields but as only q1 is there how we will get to know that this q1 is giving us radial charge or electric field or something we will not be able to know when we are dealing with a single charge now what we did from the space we brought a charge qt that is a test charge test charge okay so this test charge is kept in the vicinity of our charge q1 q1 which is giving us radial distribution of electric field see it is giving us radial distribution of electric field this electric fields will go to qt will go to qt and now we will see some effect or some force on the this test charge q okay we will see some effect on this test charge q now if we will bring this test charge near if we are bringing this test charge near to q1 the force will be more force will be more if we are taking it away force will reduce force will be reducing less now when i said time dependent electromagnetic phenomena what happens our charges show electromagnetic nature also okay uh, they tend to transfer energy in electromagnetic ways and it is time dependent how in a system of charge q1 and q2 these two are placed in a system and they are giving some electric field we will assume that q1 is giving electric field to q2 now what happened this q2 is now our uh, q2 is kept stationary okay there is no movement of q2 q2 is stationary and we are moving our q2 away from it first case one away and case two nearer if we are moving away force will decrease force decrease if we are moving nearer force will increase now what is basically happening over here is when we are moving q1 away from it away from it this will this will show less force but uh, the movement is happening as we are dealing with electromagnetic phenomena movement will happen at the speed of light speed of 
light speed of light that is c but q2 will show effect after a time delay we cannot define how much time delay will be there it depends upon the system and the uh, distance we made q1 to move okay so we will write it it will show time delay effects and what is basically happening over there when we are taking q1 away uh, the force will decrease it will some uh, take some time uh, for q2 to register that q1 is moved though q1 is moving with the speed of light and it is uh, like um, it, these electric fields which are around q1 are also moving with the speed of light but the distance which is in between q1 and q2 needs to be covered up which takes some time so that is the time delay when we are considering such system where motion is there where distance between the two charges is there when we want to do comparative study between q1 and q2 q3 q4 q and and the number of charges in such systems we need electric field so electrostatics is a branch where we will be just uh, reading and understanding how these electric charges are working but in our day to day life what we see is we see that we do not have stationary charges even when we switch on our tube light or the bulb the we will see a rush of electron movement that's how the electricity is being generated there is movement of the electrons and hence generation of electricity so it's not always the static charges the charges move and hence they produce the useful effect so it is very much necessary to study about electric field coulomb's law and superposition principle have their own limitations and electric fields gives us a wide view uh, and uh, knowledge when we read the electric charges it is one of the fundamental characterization for our charges okay so in the upcoming slides we will read only the physical significance as per to the given notes okay so see physical significance of our electric field for any system of charges measurable quantity is force on a charge which can be directly determined using coulomb's law and superposition principle as stated already these are the fundamental ones coulomb's law and superposition principle we are reading from the first day itself and this defines the force on a charge then why electric field is introduced when we are able to define a force on a charge force on a system why do we need to study electric field electric field is an elegant way of characterizing the electrical environment of system of charges electric field at a point in a space around a system of charges tells you the force of a unit positive charge unit positive charge that would experience if placed at that point without disturbing the system here we are not disturbing the system at all the system remains same it will stay static if it is in motion it will stay in motion and by keeping our test charge we can find the uh, characters of that system okay electric field is a characteristic of system of charges and is independent of test charges that you place at a point to determine the field why we are saying it is independent of test charge as i have already explained in the previous slide test charge have smaller magnitude magnitude is less and hence the electric field generated by the test charge is also very small which do not produce any countable effect the effect produced here is negligible okay the term field refers to a quantity that is defined at every point in space and many and may vary from point to point of course it will vary from point to point how see we are having a charge over here and this is the radial distribution of electric fields okay 
so see over here many lines okay we will take this point many lines same cross section we will draw here how many only two lines here four lines here two lines so as the distance increases uh, the electric field distribution also becomes lesser and hence we can define electric field at every point and it is different at every point nearer to the charge more is effect of electric field farther from the charge less is the effect of electric field electric field is a vector quantity as electric field is uh, sino like uh, similar to the force so force is also a vector quantity and it uh, electric field is derived from the force so it is also a vector quantity true physical significance of electric field is emerges only when we go beyond electrostatics okay when we uh, try to study charges which are not static in nature and deals with the time dependent electromagnetic phenomena where we need to see at which time and how much time these electromagnetic phenomena are taking the time dependency in the electromagnetic phenomena whenever is dealt we need electric field concept to define it suppose we consider the force between two distant charges q1 and q2 in a accelerated motion like q1 and q2 are the two charges which are placed at some distance r now we have made this system in accelerated motion q1 is accelerating and going near to q2 going away to q2 the field pictured in this is the accelerated motion of charges q1 produce electromagnetic waves we know motion of charges produces electricity what is electricity the motion of charges again so it is actually a electromagnetic wave okay this acceleration produces electromagnetic wave em waves when we will go to the chapter of em waves we will understand how these charges are helpful in uh, producing em waves and the em waves which are being produced by accelerated charged particle are used in medicinal uh, like machines uh, very much one of the best example is the x rays you see in your daily life like you go you got a fracture somewhere and you are going to take an x ray that x rays are a form of electromagnetic waves which are generated by the accelerated motion of electrons in a cyclotron okay and beta tron in that we ask a proton to just get accelerated these are the things these are accelerators which accelerate the charged particle and this acceleration of charged particle produces em waves and these em waves have a medicinal use uh, for usefulness also as well as these em waves are used for many other process which are uh, other than medicine also but uh, a very important phenomena in medicine is observed due to acceleration of charged particles now uh, which then propagates with the speed of light all the em waves move with speed of light reaches q2 and causes force on q2 now this will move accelerate towards q2 and if it is going near to q2 it will create some force on q2 right so the notion of field elegantly accounts for the time delay now when we read the field this is like field in circular motion and this field actually tells us why there is a time delay at t second it a second it reached to q2 but at t plus 2 second q2 is having feeling the force f why the time delay is happening so the field is able to explain us thus even though electric and magnetic fields can be detected only by their effects or forces on charges they are regarded as physical entities because they exist and hence they are regarded as physical entities okay not merely mathematical construction they are not just our mathematical dream or a hypothetical concept it is true they do exist but they exist when we are taking two charges okay so these are physical entities they have an independent dynamic of their own 
and they evolve according to laws of their own they can transport energy too they can transport energy so they have their own laws they evolve according to their own laws independent dynamic of their own and they tend to transport energies also because they are kind uh, like they are in, in a way in a effect effective way in the electromagnetic waves what does electromagnetic waves do they also transfer energy thus a source of time dependent electromagnetic field turned on for a short interval of time then switched off leaves behind propagating electromagnetic fields transporting energy like once we accelerate q1 now it will come near to this and after that it will keep propagating keep propagating like this and then there will be a transfer, a transfer of energy even after we switched off the system even after we made this q at rest q1 at rest still it will show some effects the concept of field was first introduced by faraday and is now among the central concept of physics it is very much necessary to learn the concept of electric field when we are dealing with physics and uh, it was introduced by our scientist faraday okay so uh, that's all for today's class this last part significance of electric field plays a very important role when you will deal with the concept based question in your board examination and then assertion and reason type questions in your competitive examination so this particular uh, notes in these last two slides is very much important for one to understand and once you understand this you will understand why we are reading the these lengthy derivations in the electric field and how we are dealing with it why we are dealing with it what sort of charges we took which charges uh, we are introducing in the given formula you will understand everything so read it with respect to your board exams and with respect to the assertion region type in your competitive examination that's all for today's class bye bye